filmmaking almost by accident because I was a journalist working as an independent producer for NBC Nightly News and I was always in the developing world. I was one of the few females in Afghanistan or Iraq and uh, so I had stories, really compelling stories to tell and print was just not, wasn't a venue that was rich enough. The first film that I worked on uh, as associate producer was Ethics for the New Millennium with um, the Dalai Lama, which was really interesting film, you know, following the Dalai Lama around for uh, three months and constantly, you know, having to apologize for cursing in front of him, you know, and, and he was, uh, he was very cool about it. You know, when you get to hang out with the Dalai Lama and he's saying these things you don't understand, you go, they're just thousand stories in the naked city, I have to keep going, and that's how I became a filmmaker. I'm in places where they're often 90% men to 10% female, um, and the women are always the most compromised in the places where I'm working, because I work in the developing world a lot. That's where my focus has been until the Nell Shipman film. And um, the truth is, I often find that men can be quite helpful and women are very competitive because they have a, a sense of scarcity about what is available to them instead of a sense of camaraderie. I have really found that if you focus on the content, people will come. If you're in a situation where being a female is an advantage and you don't compromise who you are as a person, there are advantages to being a female in a man's world. I met a woman named Zainab Salbi. I used to live in San Francisco, that's where I'm from, and she is the founder of Women for Women. It's an organization where you adopt women in post-war zones for $25 a month, and what they do is non-gender specific training, and she had started the company with just $2,000 her wedding dowry, and she needed somebody to help her. And so I went with her. I went with her to Afghanistan, and it was three months after shock and awe. I had my agent call up um, Oprah magazine, you know, to write this article about going to Afghanistan as a, you know, a fiction writer that suddenly changed her life. And this woman changed my life. Her story changed my life. Tell the truth. Um, and even if you're doing a feature film, you know, look, when, when you're telling the truth, when your actors are telling the truth, when you're watching a good story, hearing a good story, when it's the truth, your hair stands up on the back of your neck and people know it. I found though because I was writing a story in the sesquicentennial of Idaho the last 150 years and I had to research every county to chronologically look at what the the history was and I came across this woman that was wearing you know this fin fantastic wolf and uh, Hudson Bay Company coat and here she was in 1919 up in the wilderness of Idaho when I found out what she was doing when she was writing, producing, starring in, doing her own stunts, pioneered the first nude scene and nobody knew who she was. I felt I owed her a debt. I could not have been doing what I did in Afghanistan or Iraq if not for a woman like that busting down the walls a hundred years ago. If your house was burning down, what would you take? And he said, I would take the fire. And that's what I think we have to do as storytellers, as filmmakers, as actors, as human beings. We have to take the fire. We have to pass it forward.